and welcome to the MBS show episode number 337. I am your host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Starstream. Hello every pony. Hello man, you sound happy? Yeah, I sound happy and a bit painful at the same time. Oh, what happened? I just went for a massage. Ah. The thing is I was having a bit of a some body aches issue and whatnot, so I decided to go massage. Where Malaysia? Yeah, in Malaysia. Alright. It's kind of interesting, and I'll just talk about it later on in the show. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. Yeah, all right, all right. Uh, I, I have some stuff too. I, I did some cool things today too. Yay. Mm-hmm. So, but before that, let's head into the news. Let's, let's jump into the news. So, remember last week when we talked about that Kotobukiya figure, that Pinkie Pie figure, and it had colors and whatnot, and they had a picture of it? Okay, yep. uh, we got an update to that, and this week, Ooh. Um, there's a gallery, obviously, and now Japan has it for pre-order for a hundred and five dollars American. Uh, if you want to buy it from the Japanese store, please do so. Links are in the show notes where you can get them. And if you don't want to buy it on the Japanese store, you can head to Kotobukiya USA. Uh, it's listed there for well. A hundred dollars. Well, technically it's ninety nine point ninety nine, so that means it's what ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Add in one more cent, and you'll get a hundred. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it's over there. It's over there. Yep. Well, for our case, the easier option would still be going through Ami Ami. <laughs> oh, yeah, because true, obviously, true, true. because for our case is that I obviously we don't see Japan will ship directly to us. So Ami Ami will be always be the better choice. <laughs> yeah, true, 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 true. I mean, I I checked out Ami Ami, and Ami Ami sends it. What? Well, no, no, there's a special right now for pre-order thing. Um, it costs you about three hundred plus ringgit, something like that. Hmm. Well, the reason why I know Ami Ami will ship is because my friend always buy on Ami Ami. He's a figure collector. Mm. I have a friend who does the same thing, and he bought some stuff from Ami Ami. And the painful part is tax. Like, sometimes he get tax for what he bought. And that sucks. Well, the good thing is that for our case, we don't get tax for it. I mean... Uh, in probably. The, but, yeah. No, that's the that's the truth for our case. I oh, mean, no, 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 no. I... To, to... Sorry, go ahead. Finish your thoughts. Well, when we fish, uh, ship it to Brunei, that is. <laughs> okay. So, for me, uh, I've recently bought some Magic the Gathering cards from Star City Game. And they shipped it to me via FedEx, which is yay. Um, it reached around to my place in, uh, I, I'm thinking three days. So Yahoo, that's very fast, very fast. Good on them. But the problem is I got taxed when it, that card came in. And it was just 10 cards really. And not more than, I'm thinking like most of them are cheap cards and some expensive like, 10 to 20 dollars something like that and i got taxed when those cards come in and i got no idea why it's one of those things where why did i get tax that's kind of difficult yeah i know right uh, but okay you know what if you don't want to go to the hassle of ordering it yourself and shipping it and hoping that it's all good and whatnot uh if you are in singapore or in Johor, like me, in my case, there is a store called Latendo. And that shop does figures and, uh, does figures and does more, you know, all the standard, uh, anime hobby stuff. And they have the My Little Pony Bishojo Pinkie Pie for pre-order now. And it's the same thing, uh, Kotobukiya released in May 2019. Uh, the scale is 1.7, which is 225 millimeters, and so on. Uh, the price right now for non members is about $182. That's Singapore dollars. And for member price, it's about $163.80. And the deposit is about $80. So, this is another good way for you to get it instead of buying it from uh, what you call this Amiami or even USA. But <laughs> mind you that the price here is a bit jacked up. Well, it's always typically going to be jacked up anyway because it's a sh- 
it's in a retail situation, not like online purchases where you when you just buy and the supplier will just ship it to you directly. True, true. That is true. That is true. But um, I'm looking here at uh, Kotobukiya Japan, the online store for Japan, and they have it for four hundred and thirty nine ringgit. So there's a big shift in cash there. I mean, I love to buy the figure from Singapore where I can just carry it home and I can have the box in pristine condition. But sometimes, uh, you know, yeah, pricing, man. Like if I got a, a well-paying job, then I don't really mind. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. And even the price from the um, American store. Yeah, the American store's pricing is not bad. It's giving me about 415 ringgit. So, uh, if you really want this, it's there. But uh, but, that, but then again, have you seen the Ami Ami price? Oh, man. Like, where, where, where is it? Like, uh, Ami Ami, I need to go. Okay, uh, talk about it, man. Yeah, uh, I saw the price, and uh, the price is well. It's kind of interesting. It's oh really? Yeah, it's uh, it's discounted apparently. For now, I think yes. It's rather than the original price of eleven thousand yen, it's ninety nine hundred yen. Oh yeah. Um, why is that? It and apparently it's approximately eight eighty eight uh, USD. Huh. Huh. That huh. makes it even better. <laughs> well, technically, this is for pre-order now. Uh, yep. So, yeah, it's about 368 ringgit. So, that is interesting. That is really, really interesting. Huh. I guess that's the reason why many people choose Ami Ami, I guess. Probably, probably. I mean, from my understanding of Ami Ami, um, the way they do the packaging, I mean, like, the condition and whatnot, when it came to my, um, because of my friend, I look at the boxes and everything. Most of them are in pristine condition. Huh. Well, they they good. they done the wrapping quite well. Yeah, uh, th- that's good. That's always good. Uh, you, you know what, people at home, if you're interested in this figure, uh, you have your choices to buy directly from Ami Ami, or you can get it from your Kotobukiya American store. Or I won't recommend the Japanese store. It don't make sense. So yeah. Um, pr- I'm assuming why it's so expensive is probably because of the tax. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Uh, but still, in all honesty, probably if I were to buy this personally, I would go for uh, Ami Ami. But here's a cautionary tale for you guys. Be sure that uh, you're prepared to pay tax. So yeah, there's that. So be sure that you're ready to pay tax just in case that uh, the your local government wants to charge you for it. Mm, that's where the brutality is. Yeah, and there's the risk of buying stuff online is. And unless you're American and you buy stuff from the Amazon store or even eBay, then you don't really need. Then you don't really get tax. But then again, you do know the the problem of buying it on eBay. Depending on the store, depending on the store. And it's always time to be a scout market. Oh yeah, true that. But you know what? We don't really need to think about that. We don't really need to worry about that. That's May 2019. And um, let's go to something current right now. And something current is the My Little Pony Friendship with Magic Season 7 DVD box set. It's out and available. Hmm. That's kind of cool. But the thing is, how many DVDs are they saying on Season 7? Uh, okay, I'm just going to read out from the facts here. And uh, the DVD is available on Amazon.com. It's about $34, well, I'm just going to round it up, $35 for four DVDs. Mm. And it's released by Shout Factory. And yeah, it's there, it's there. The only negative I could give it is that you don't really get much out of it in terms of uh, what you would call this behind the scenes special features and whatnot. They started doing this in season eight with the animatics. That is really cool. But in season seven, they don't 
really do that and we didn't get any here. Hmm, that's kind of sad. Yeah. You, you would thought that they would at least give you something, right? Yeah. Uh, Obviously, I thought they would give you something just like the movie where they give you like the extra specials or things like that. Yeah, true, 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 true. But that was what? Box set for season 7? I wonder if they have box set for 1 to 6. Probably they have, but you never know. Yeah, well, I do see 6. I do see. Yeah, there, there is there, there is there. I, I'm guessing if I click on Shop Factory, I probably get the full list. Probably. But, you know, if you are a fan, uh, you should do this. And I would recommend you guys at home who re- who, who wants to officially support the show, do this. Because sometimes if you... Well, example, Netflix. They have this back and forth being on and being off. And if you want to have your stable ponies, go buy a box set. That's much more better. And... On the iTunes version, did you remember that one news where uh, a guy complained to Apple about his video not being available anymore? And Apple says, sorry, we took it out of the store and here's a gift card, I guess. (laughs) Uh, I don't really remember. I think that was a while ago. Yeah, and, and that's bad. Like, just think about it. You bought a movie... Apple took it down, and you're out of a movie. That sucks. That really, really sucks. Of course it would suck. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But hey, uh, that's the news for this week because it's a slow news week. I'm just surprised that we got that much in terms of news. So that's good. Mm-hmm. But anywho, let's head into the next topic. And next topic is what have we been doing with our week? And Star, you have an interesting week, so share with us, man. All right. Uh, my week has been a bit, uh, you know, the typical, usual slow week and whatnot. Well, today it is a bit different. I went go down to Malaysia and uh, just had to do some things. It, oh. Well, yesterday I had I had a fur meet, um, a meeting with some furries, and it wasn't bad. Talking a lot of random stuff here and there. But as for um, uh, as for today, I was like. Uh, uh, you know, bro, I probably forgot some things to do because yesterday when I went down, it was after work, so I could have like missed out a lot of the stuff. But before that, like you said, for for meat, like, uh, is it in in Malaysia? Well, my um my week has been uh like I said, uh like I said, yeah, I was meeting with some furries, so uh, some local furs and whatnot. It was, it was kind of fun to talk about random stuff here and there. In, so, what, uh, what do, that's saying? in Malaysia? That yeah, that's up? in Malaysia, ah, right. yeah. How is the Malaysian furry, especially in the eastern part of Malaysia? How, how are they? Like, are their suits really good or stuff? Truth be told, I found out there's a way more um, furries in um, compared to Brownies in the eastern part of Malaysia, so that's that. And if you talk about in terms of fursuit quality, um, it depends on the budget of people. Not everyone like work on a high de- a high pay job and get all the good stuff. But mm. the thing is that, but the nice thing is that being in a furry community, eh, you kind of uh, can find like like furries quite easily. Like in, even in my case, I. I thought I was like, oh, finding bronies would be so difficult and whatnot because I was uh, having so much difficult finding bronies in both like East Malaysia and uh, and uh, West. both in East Malaysia and Brunei. Sorry. All right. Um, I only so far found one, one, uh, one or two like, like just like close by. All right. And one was in Limbang and one was like around in uh, Cebu, something like that. Oh, wait, right. was it Cebu or Pintulu? Around um, that, but as for Sabah, I think there may be one of few or two of them. But obviously, you know, one of them is who? Yeah, Elsman. Elsman was yeah. No, Elsman is coaching. Oh, okay, good. My bad. But if you talk about Sabah, Sabah only know one, and that is the creator of Pony Who. Oh, really? No. Yeah, but Sabah, uh, coaching wise, I know there's like four or five of them. Yeah, yeah. I Thanks, think there's a group yeah. of them. Yeah, thanks to uh, thanks to our good friend Charlie. 
Yeah, yeah, and also Elsman. Elsman is kind of the how do I put this uh, community advisor or something like that. He he was the forerunner for it back then, and I think he's mm-hmm. still now, but not really, not much in terms of uh, pony stuff. But carry on, carry on. Mm-hmm. So uh, it it gets interesting. But if you talk about furry community, there is literally like four or five in Kuching. There's like. Three, there's like three so far in uh, Miri. And I can imagine there's maybe one or two in Bintulu, Cebu, all these places. There's like at least 10, 10 to 15 in Keke. There is a lot. Like, there yeah. is a lot. <laughs> and by the way, when I say 10 to 15, that is like literally like maybe about five or six in Keke. And there's like what, maybe a few of them in Sandakan. And there's even one in Papar. Wow. <laughs> there is a lot of furries out there. I mean, it is, uh, quote-unquote, a larger Venn diagram of entertainment compared to bronies because it's well, it's a very small niche when you think about it. And yeah, how how many websites are there dedicated to ponies versus how many websites are they dedicated to furry art and so on? There is a lot. But- yeah, there's there is a lot, but in terms of like, if you want to talk about furry news, um, it's kind of hard to find rather than like pony news. Pony news is very easy to find. Mm. At least there's the like dedicated sites here and there. There is like dramas uh, which is recorded into sites which we yeah. we don't want to talk about. Yeah. But in terms of furry drama, it could get very dramatic sometimes, <laughs> like overly dramatic. I, I don't even opinion. want to know. I don't even want to know. But yeah, but if, <sighs> but, but if you want to talk about the community wise, um, let's just say that. My understanding of this year's uh, furry convention in uh, Malaysia that is up and coming mm-hmm. apparently is about 300 participants. Ooh, that's good. Yep. Back in like last year it was about 200 plus and um, back back like when uh, 2016 was about s- less than um, was it 75? Yeah, it was about 75. Yeah. When they started that furry convention uh, it was in the same hotel that I was staying and that was close by to that year's comic fiesta. I remember I heard when in uh, twenty fifteen it was like less than like twenty, but mm. and then after that twenty sixteen was about seventy plus, and that's where I saw the photo of the the first suit that they posted at the at the swimming pool thanks to a friend of uh, uh ex Brony friend, mm. <laughs> and yeah. um and then now. 2016, uh, 2017, I was like, oh, wait, I was like, on 2016, I was like, oh, wow, that's gonna be interesting. I do wanna see how for, for a convention is like, 2017 went there. Oh, boy, it's such a big convention. It was like, oh, wow. it's You can say it's a mid-sized convention that time. 200 people and whatnot. There was a lot of people and they were having fun and whatnot. Now 2017 and now 2018, 300 people. Wow, that is a lot, that is a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I I'll think about it, man. Like I I want to go, but responsibilities are holding me back. Yeah, the thing is that it it gets a bit interesting because we tend to meet a lot of graduated bronies. <laughs> That's why I call it, I uh bronies that quit the fandom, but they sh- uh, quit the furry uh, the pony fandom, but they shifted to the furry fandom. So in the end, in the sense that I was like, oh, congrats, you have just graduated from the <laughs> brony fandom. <laughs> Oh, I, and, you, I and you move and you move on to the main fandom, which is the furry. Because in a sense, you could say that the pony fandom is a subcategory of a furry fandom. That is true. That is true in a strange way. Yes, but you know what? Uh, let's move on because you mentioned <laughs> earlier on that you went for a massage. So what's yes. that about, man? Well, I was having a bit of a body ache, so I was like, you know what? I kind of want to take a massage because it's been. Four months already since I last had my massage. Mm-hmm. So, I went to do an hour and a half plus uh, scraping. Oh, those things, okay. Yeah, and plus cupping. Oh, oh, really now? Yes. So, my literally, when I saw the picture of how my body looks like, I was like, oh boy, there's so many red who, marks who, at the back. Who took the picture for you? The masseuse or... Your... Yeah, the masseuse. Really the masseuse. now? <laughs> yeah, I guess I asked the masseuse. I was like, you know what? Hey, help me take the photo for me. I was like, <laughs> because previously I done the take a photo before, and it was darn red. The 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 masseuse was like, you know, your body is damn like a lot of like 
heat in your body. Yeah, yeah. And that kind of, kind of issue. And because when he was like, just by doing the... Because originally I was asked for massage. Then the, the masseuse, he was like, you know what? I recommend you to do the acupressure. I was like, okay, fine. Mm-hmm. And I went and have acupressure. What is the difference between the massage and the acupressure? Is basically acupressure means that they use the thumb. Oh, they use the thumb and the palm oh. or the or the elbow. So literally, they use the force and press on your body. Oh my god! Like <laughs> so, I, it's, I... so it's basically it's something like uh, the finger version of acu the acupuncture. Oh, so yeah. they like they scrape on. So they push and they push the mark. So when it appears, and after that, damn, it's damn painful. Yeah, yeah, I can just see. But the thing is. Man. But the, the the masseuse say that it's a uh, what do you call it? It's painful, yes, but it's correction. Yeah, it's to it's, uh, correct the blood flow and whatnot. Because yeah, it, sometimes when we don't really uh, eat well, sleep well, or exercise, or even if we do exercise, sometimes the body needs to reset, and yeah. that's why we go to the masseuse to you know get our blood flowing, get our body corrected and whatnot it's not a must i'm guessing for uh, westerners it's a really strange thing to do i personally go there because of certain situations like oh my body is not feeling right or i haven't been sleeping well so i have back pains body pains and whatnot and the masseuse usually fix it and it, it takes time it doesn't really go for one shots Probably you'll go for a, what, once a month or twice a month, for probably kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, when I was done it, I was like, oh man, I feel a bit lightheaded <laughs> after, the, after, the whole thing, after the whole thing. Because it was like, yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> you can just say the toxin came out of the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you feel good. You feel good. Oh, one, yeah, one more I, tip, one more tip. After you do all the massage especially Thai massage or even well, I'll just say sophistication massage uh, don't take a shower don't, don't take a bath like you, that will make your body hurt more like just rest for the day like I, I actually took a shower <laughs> no comment uh, but it, yes uh, but the masseuse they did say that uh, please not recommended to take a shower because um <laughs> The pores is open. Uh-huh. Next thing you know is that the, what you call it, the cold air will go in and yeah. uh, it will cause a bit of an issue yeah. later on. Well, what you so, could do is just take, you know, wash your face or take a um, washcloth and wash your body that way. So at least you feel clean, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, that's based on your location. If you, you, if you have the sophistication massage, that's okay. But if you're in Europe, I probably think there is a Swiss massage where they use the Swiss style. That will be cool to experience. Hmm. That is, that is true. I wonder how they've the one. Like. Yeah, like, like what's their philosophy, right? Mm-hmm. Because for our case, it's mostly, um, it's a, what do you call it? It's a, a pass down kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's a heri- It's a it's a heritage in a sense. Mm-hmm. And also, like if I do remember right, some Thai massage they attack the bones. Like oh wow, they really do the bones. Like those those are not fun to do, but it feels good I, after. Fun fact: I actually did went for one in Thai Ponycon last oh, year. How was it, man? How was it? <laughs> It it was quite interesting. I mean, all four of us did the whole time massage because we we keep on passing by this one shop and we keep on <laughs> looking at the sign. It says, "You know what? Let's go in for once." And then we go in and then we we do the massage because the reason why we choose to do it is because in Thailand, uh, it's actually quite cheap to do Thai. It's it's actually quite cheap to do massage. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah. And uh. and in the end, how much? Uh, my after the whole treatment for my case, it cost a. Uh, well, it's in your standard, it's quite expensive. It's RM150. No bad. Yep. But the thing is, in our case, it's damn cheap. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Because we, i done a, a proper massage before, an hour and 30 minutes uh, with the aromatherapy and whatnot, mm-hmm. the, with the oil. It costs about 90 plus. Ooh, okay. For an hour and a half. That is Brunei dollar. And in this case, it's 150 ringgit. Or cheaper than, with yeah. the, But with three different treatment. I was, oh. I was quite surprised. I was like, oh, 150? I was like, wow. 
I was like, no wonder why people come once in a while come uh, come to Malaysia just to do massage. Yeah. Uh, so true, so true, so true. So what else, man? Is that all, man? Well, I also did get my new USB hub. Ah, uh, yes. I, I don't <laughs> think we talk about this on the last show. Uh, I think we talk about it after the fact. But uh, for those who don't know, explain what it is this, man. So this USB hub is a is a extension uh, is a USB uh, port. Um, it's a USB 3.0 uh, 7 port U- PCIe extension. So why it means that it's plugged into the it's the device that plugged into the PC, in the internals, and uh, it's running seven ports. You can just literally plug seven USB devices. Wow. But the thing, it, but the nice thing is nice. It does uh, have a power external power which uses the SATA power. But the thing is that it has its own a bit of a uh, fair share of uh, issues. <laughs> uh, you, you know, uh, we, we talk at length about it. I'm not going to repeat myself. But hey, uh, right now it's issues with the drivers, was it? It's, a, I think, in my opinion, I think it's a bit of a power. I, either, it's, either it's driver or it's, either it's power. But I, I have a sus- more suspect it's a power problem. Power delivery is not enough. So Yeah, yeah power delivery is one thing. But... My PSU is more than enough power to do it. But I'm assuming that it should be not enough uh, power. Yeah, because you're, uh, for folks who don't really know, uh, you have a really powerful rig. You're running a 1080 Ti, was it? No? No, it's non-Ti. Yeah, just a standard 1080. And your processor is pretty okay too, top of the line. And on top of that, you have a Blue Yeti, which is plugged in via USB, which is also plugged into your sound. Seven two two. Yeah, and that and that for people who have no idea, that is your sound driver, right? Yes, the Scarlet two i two. That is my audio interface, yes. which is my because I'm using XLR on my Blue Yeti. Yeah. Uh, same here with me. I I don't have a Blue Yeti, but I have a condenser microphone, which use a. What you want to call this cable again, Star? I forgot. XLR. Yeah, XLR, and it's <laughs> and my baby here is only running on a USB power to the motherboard, and USB delivery is usually five volts, and I'm surprised that it's running. Hmm. The thing is that USB mics don't take much power, but the thing is that when you have like too many devices plugged into the motherboard, it does have a bit of a power issue yeah. because I did. I did enter into that state before, like, because I have plugged in a lot of devices. I also have plugged in my webcam, my Blue Yeti is also plugged in, and then my audio interface is plugged in, not to mention my mouse and keyboard is running. Mm -hmm, So, mm -hmm. and then after that, I did one time, I plugged into another one device, and apparently, it kills my webcam. (laughs) Oh, uh, not enough power. So, it was like, I was like, oh boy, that is going to be interesting. And I looked at the back, I was like, hmm, five out of six port being used. (laughs) Yeah. Not not fun, not fun. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I was like, hmm. In the future, I may need to have a bit more. And we, so because and, and this is this this is the problem solver, which is a seven, uh, slot USB kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that was one of the things that I saw. Actually, originally, I could go for the five port version, and I feel like the five port may be more stable than the seven <laughs> port. But you wanted more, more power. <laughs> well, more port. Which who know? Who knows? What will be used, right? Yeah, future proofing. I, I I don't blame you, man. I don't blame you. Like, I <laughs> we we like I mentioned before, we talked at length about this. We have two different perspectives, but I understand. Uh, having more ports is awesome, and having it slot to a PCIe slot is much better. Uh, you know what? It, it's future proofing, and my only thing that I can say about it right now is that it could be your power supply. If it's not it, that, I I got no idea. The driver probably. It could be because considering I'm running four hard drive at the same time. Oh god, no wonder. It it is the power. It's, it is the power. It could be. I have no idea. <laughs> hey, wait. Do, do, I, do, I'm, sorry. But the thing is, hard drive don't take much power. Yeah, but That's if you're running four of them, including your graphics card, including your processor, and including all the other devices, that plays I part. I did power calculation before. It's only up to like what, about four hundred something. Yeah, probably. No, wait. No, it's about five hundred something. Yeah, but you, you, it's not. It's, it's better to have more extra. By the way, don't you have a friend who has a one k power uh, supply? No, I don't have a friend that has oh, a one k okay. supply, oh. because we 
when we do our when I do my build, why why I was chosen? Actually, my friend told me that going for eight fifty is actually a bit overkill. Mm. I could actually just go in my setup. It's a maybe you just maybe need around six fifty to seven fifty is more than enough. But I go with my eight fifty. What was that before? Was because of the efficiency curve. Mm, all right, all right. That makes sense. Think, that makes sense. I think probably because it hits maybe the because. Probably made me hit a bit over the efficiency curve, and it t- tend to have a bit of a power drop or something like that. Yeah, pro- probably something around there. You know what? Uh, let's get off this topic because people at home don't really understand PCs. And uh, long story short, Star Hill has a new fun toy, and it's causing a bit of problem, which is not really that much of an issue, right? Not really. Yeah. So. As for me, uh, let's see. I, I, my day was pretty simple. Like my my week was, uh, nothing much. Okay. Uh, let me rephrase it. My week was interesting because my main TV where I play video games suddenly didn't want to work with my games. I'm guessing the HDMI slots are dead, and yeah, I can't play my Wii U. I can't play my PS4. And I even can't play my PS3. So there's something wrong with the TV there. So to troubleshoot, I shift my PlayStation 4 to my PC monitor and try it that way. And it works. So after a few times, okay, the problem is on the TV, not the console itself or the cable. Okay, uh, that's done. I decided to... Um, put my PS4 near my PC monitor. Awesomeness. The only issue is I have to go to the back and switch the cables. You know, right? <laughs> uh, put the... Yep. You know, so so that, that's a hassle. That's a hassle. So... You, sorry? But, but you know, I kind of want to introduce you to a product. <laughs> ah, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Before you introduce me to a product, I went to uh, our local online store called leilong.com and bought myself a HDMI splitter. Splitter? Yep. Are you sure that is the correct one? Yep. Why? No, because there's... Sh- because when you say splitter, right, that means it's one... like, one input and multiple output. No, 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 no. Uh, in this case, it's one output, three inputs. You mean one output, three three inputs? Yes. That is a HDMI switch. Switch. Okay, my it's bad. Not split, it's, that is not a splitter because splitter means that you have one input and multiple outputs. Uh, all right, my bad. So it was a switch. Yes, that's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I, I beforehand I went to Harvey Norman's and asked them about it, and oh, they say oh you should get this. This is Good and it costs three hundred ringgit. Oh, it's very high end quality. Blah 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 blah. And I thought about it and then like I'll think about it because I did my research beforehand and Leilong dot com sold it for sixteen ringgit. <laughs> so I bought that one. It arrived and it works well. Whenever I turn on my PS4, the switch kind of says, "Hey, there's a new input. You want to use this one? Yeah, go ahead." And I play my games. And after I'm done, I just press the button and go back to PC. Yay, much fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only annoying part is the audio. Since my monitor doesn't have a speaker, it doesn't really produce that much sound. Instead, it has a 35mm jack and I have to put in a speaker be- <laughs> speaker to it. And the speaker that I have right now is your edifier... <laughs> stereo speaker it's just simple it's just there It's it works it works so I'm just using that for now in all honesty I would love to get a Razer Leviathan soundbar that would be much fun but I have to use a lot of money to just buy that kind of thing instead you know what I just use whatever I have it's much more cheaper that way right? mm-hmm yeah. Well, if you want a cheaper way, well, you you're on the edifier, but did you know there is a a budget stereo uh, studio speaker? <laughs> okay, does it <laughs> does it count it as I didn't have to pay for my speaker because it was from a previous purchase that my mom did? Um, 
Okay. Uh, yeah, see. That's, that's fair enough. Yeah, see. So because the thing is that because my the funny thing is that my t- my monitor that I have right now is is the same issue. I have a three point five millimeter jack at the back. Mm-hmm. So you just plug it in there. <laughs> it works, right? It it works, literally. Yeah, it works. So okay. The thing, but the thing is that, like I said, um, because I'm also planning to future proof my monitor. So in the end, my monitor is gonna be went off. It probably gonna be become my fourth monitor in the in the future. <laughs> All right. But uh, back 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 to uh, the current topic at hand. So, uh, it works. Um, it it fixes an issue that I have. So yay! And today, I was uh, one of my local game store. I think I brought you their star, Impulse Gaming, mm-hmm. and yep. they showed that hey, uh, we have this new product, and that is the Oakley, uh Quick Charge Brick. Uh, what was it called? Give me a second. Give me a second, folks. I am retrieving the box. Okay. It is the Oakley uh, 48 watt USB C wall charge with power delivery and quick charge 3.0. Yes, that's what I bought for myself today. And to top that, I also bought a uh, USB C to lightning cable for my iPhone. <laughs> yes, folks, I use an iPhone. Don't worry, it's not an iPhone 10 or 10s Max or whatever it is. It's just an iPhone 8. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, I uh, bought it there, use it for charging and whatnot, and uh, I, I'm not 100% sure if it's working or not because when I start charging, my battery was already on 70%. So, who knows? Uh, I'll do a full report next week when I got to discharge my device and give you a full report. Well... Then again, I think the best is still my my device. <laughs> okay, what is your device? Mine is a what you call it. I got this is the same brand as my USB hub, which is the Oracle brand. Mm-hmm. It's the one two three four five six seven eight eight port <laughs> eight port USB charger. Makes sense. Okay, but uh, that is that that one is running on a laptop brick because yeah. what happened was a pass is a long story back then on um my trip to doing a forum. Did not this happen because last year? Apparently. Yeah, it happened last year. <laughs> that you you saw it the device. Yeah, I saw it. it was really cool. Yes, yeah, it's very cool. Apparently, all oh, this this thing is what's so cool about it is it intelligent supercharger. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> For all eight ports, so literally, if you plug all eight ports of like iPhone or or Android, iPad, you literally can do it. Yeah, you can literally like <laughs> oh, you know, supercharge it. You you. But know. then again. Mm-hmm. But then again, this brand is a bit overkill though, <laughs> because it's it's not it's not just specialized in like this kind of weird peripherals, but it also specializes in a lot of like, like where well, you can say weird peripherals like, in a sense. Yeah, like, like um... I I ever saw on the website they have a twenty four port charger. Woof, and that is like literally it's like a it runs in a like a. It like the case that it comes like the the how it's like the port is the whole device is like it's like a small brick. Oh, wow! But and that is like and I I think I even saw a fifty port charger. Oh version my also. god! That's uh, enough. Yeah, and and if I'm not mistaken, I even saw like one version that is like twenty five port. Well, it has but rather than this like square that has this port. It also have like groove at the top, so you literally can put like the phone oh, right on wow. top of it, and after you can put the cable like connected to it. it it's quite cool. Oh, and they also have like the WD's enclosure, you know, like the Western digital enclosure. Dri- yeah, yeah. No, 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 the hard drive enclosure or this SSD enclosure. They have all those also. Oh wow! <laughs> and they apparently they even have the Qi charging. Uh, what you call Qi charging? What um, pad. Oh wow! External, yeah, external. There is like with a five USB connection. Oh wow! That that is too much, man. That is too much. Like, uh, yeah, seriously, that is too much. But, um, back to your original statement there with the eight USB charge. Whenever you go to a convention, you're gonna be everybody's friend. I literally, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, and you don't even bring your charger. I'll- just use mine. <laughs> yeah, but you bring your cable. Bring your cable. Yeah, just bring your cable. Yeah. Oh, you're using USB-C? Too bad. 
No, the thing is that you, you use USB C. If as long as your USB, the standard USB to USB C, then you're still fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, right. But yeah, uh, um, yeah. Today I went out by phone accessories like for the charge brick and the cable. So that's yay. Uh, also, on a side note, I bought a new wallet. Yay! My old wallet was nice. tearing apart. So, yay, that's that. And for the first time today, I had Texas chicken. So, I'm, I'm just gonna wait for you guys at home to groan and say, Oh my god, why do you have to eat that crap? In all honesty, I never had it before. And if you do comment down below, I know you have been listening to this uh, episode. Good on you, man. Awesome. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, getting back on track. I had Texas chicken for the first time. Uh, I had their burgers. It was not bad. It was not bad compared to the recent KFC burger that's promoting now. <laughs> okay, guess what, folks at home? Right now, uh, KFC Malaysia, they're doing this uh, promotion where you have your normal Zinger burger. I- I'm assuming that everybody in the world has a Zinger burger. Just imagine taking that patty and putting two waffles on it. All right, hit scratch now, and they have a turkey bacon strip or beef bacon strip, and now put maple syrup on it. <laughs> yep, and and also chicken. Don't forget the chicken. Yeah, the main the, part. The, yeah, the patty, the the chicken patty. The patty, yeah. yes, yeah. the patty, yes, the patty. So the fun fact: yeah. we also have it in Brunei. Oh God! But the thing is, uh-huh. but the thing is, I rather go to Malaysia and eat it. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. A hundred percent out of okay, uh, out of all the friends I ask, hundred percent of them says it tastes like crap. <laughs> mm, I I have not even tried it yet. Yeah, same here. Okay, here's the thing. I know that waffle maple syrup chicken does work. I seen it before, and a lot of Americans say it's good, but most of the chicken I saw there is kind of roasted or bake or whatever it is never deep fry <laughs> but the problem is that with this kind of uh, method of they doing it right it makes the waffle extremely extremely dry oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I, I just want to go there and try it for myself just to know same I, I really want to try it actually I was going to try it but I kind of forgot about it <laughs> but the, not, not forget it's more like I saw the queue was too long uh-huh. and I was like, you know what? I, just, I feel like I'm wasting time if I queue for this. So, you know what? Ciao. <laughs> yeah. But uh, back on Texas Chicken, I, I like it. Uh, if you if you find another brand that's much better, do let me know in the comment below. And yeah, probably if I have it here, I'll try it and I'll give you my response. And if you say McDonald's and KFC or even e w that's not fair because we have that here locally and... Yeah, like food. It's fast food. No. <laughs> well, I like I like A and W though. Yeah, but, but the thing is that the thing is that the sad thing is that it's not available in the East Malaysia. Yeah, like A and W here, like in in my location where I'm staying, there's only three stores, and that's that, sad. that's better than nothing. Yeah, true. But you know what? Um, let let's get off topic here because we've been talking a lot about foods and whatnot and. Uh, I I don't want to be hungry. Like, I I just recently ate. Uh, that's good. So I don't really need to worry that much. But yeah, no man, no. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail dot com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, do follow it to see what I've been doing. Um, usually. Uh, it's connected to my Instagram and I post food and my games, whatever it is that I'm doing. So uh, if you want to see what I do besides the ponies, uh, go follow the Instagram there. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And Star, where can the good people find you? People can find me on my Twitter where I post once in a while, I guess. And uh, my more updated form is my DeviantArt. And both of them is Angelico XX, by the way. So, my DeviantArt, I have just posted the picture of the hub. <laughs> just that I haven't added the, what do you call it, the comment, uh, the description yet. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. So, yeah, do so, man, do so. Uh, 
like follow us. It'll be fun. You get to see what we like, what we don't like, and stuff. Stuff. Well, most of the things that you're gonna see is my plushies anyway. <laughs> Plush are fun. Yes. Uh, all right, then. So, what where, where else? What else? What else? Uh, where's the script? <laughs> all right, yeah. <laughs> and also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvilLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to the NBA Show Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, review the Pony episodes, comics, and even movies. And sometimes, besides that, we like to do other things than ponies. Uh, one of the few things that we enjoy talking about is the Miracle's Ladybug. It is a really funny show. So, yes, do stick around or do follow us there to see what we have to say about those episodes. It's, it's really fun. So, anywho, um, if you like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I'd like to thank Mr. Flag, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. You're great. Anyway, I have been Norman Sinzo. And this is Tashree. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS Show. Bye. See ya. <laughs> and if you're listening to this now, that means you're really dedicated. So anyway, uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, you'll get to listen to the unedited version of this podcast. Uh, not really 100% unedited. There's a dub in the middle there. It's really interesting. So yeah, go there to listen and support us, yeah? Support us. Bye.